So last week we did a Osseo Emergency build that focused on getting your grenades back to back with little downtime involved, and we had a lot of fun around this, and the aspect of making snap grenades more viable. Now, however, I want to show you how you can improve this build for the upcoming Grandmaster content, as I truly believe this is going to be the best stasis build for one of the many hard contents in game. Double stasis turrets are always going to be clutch compared to the one, and with the many new weapons available to support this area, it will be hard to not miss this. But you know what else is hard to miss? My content. So if you enjoyed the video, then I really appreciate a like, a sub, and turn on your notification as I really appreciate it. For the subclass, we'll be using Shadebinder with the Osseum OC Exotic, and what I'm about to show you and explain will be similar to what I advertised the first time I covered the Exotic, so if you don't want to listen through to this section again, then please skip ahead. With that out of the way, we'll be using Bleak Watchers for access to the status turrets, which will play a big part in how active we control an area. We then have Ice Flare Bolts, which will expand on the tracking capabilities of snap grenades and shoot out additional ones to help. Both of these two aspects combined will allow us to consistently freeze combatants one after another, as long as we net the kill straight after. This will be very powerful, given how lethal stasis AoEs can be against a group of combatants, as just one freeze is all you need to wipe out a very powerful group. This however, is where the fragments will come into play to further support the two aspects. For fragments, we have the Whisper of Durance, which will extend our freeze capabilities on combatants, Whispers of Shards, which will give us grenade cooldown the moment we destroy a stasis glacier, Whispers of Fissures for increased shatter damage, and Whispers of Rending for increased kinetic damage on stasis crystals or frozen combatants. The fragments combined with the aspects allows users to consistently prevent combatants from forming up and overwhelming users in a small time frame, which is a common tactic seen by the in-game AI. As mentioned, once we get a freeze, a chain reaction will kick in and cause a wide number of other combatants to freeze and then be wiped out via Whispers of Fissures and increased shatter damage. Thanks to that and Whispers of Durance for longer stasis effects and Whispers of Rending for increased kinetic weapon damage, we can pick combatants off at long distances while they regretfully stay in one place. Whispers of Shards will also play a big part in this but only when using a weapon with headstone, which we will cover in a bit. It's also important to know what key mods and stats will also play a big part in the build. We have a 100 discipline cooldown as we want to make fully sure we are using our grenades as often as possible. Next we have Element of Armament which will allow us to create stasis wealth upon stasis weapon kills, Font of Might for the 25% weapon buff for our stasis weapons, Firepower times 2 for around 50% grenade energy back while charged with light, and the Taking Charge mod which will affect the Firepower mod. This should give you a good idea as to what you need to aim for when covering stats and mods to use, as unlike last time, we need to play more cautious considering how squishy we are, and how the likes of protective light is not in play here. Of course, this can be easily changed to accommodate more protection, but we will use what we currently have for now. Now weapons are very simple to cover, and you only need two to be fully honest. For example, my primary is the Perseus D scout rifle with shoot to loot and headstone, both perks are very good at their job with Shoot to Loot allowing you to collect ammo from a far off distance and Headstone simply allows us to create stasis crystals upon kills made. This is ideally a weapon you want to try and get as Shoot to Loot can really help you out in tough moments if you see a heavy ammo prick in the distance but can't get it, while Headstone allows us to easily create glaciers as many times as we like. Headstone on the scout rifle has been a long time coming for many since scouts have an easier time connecting the shots via quicker hits so having a scout rifle with the perk is not to be missed. Secondly, as a hacky weapon, their Aldrin perk allows users to do increased damage to stasis crystals, so combine that with Whispers of Rending for increased damage against stasis crystals as well, and you'll be able to one-shot them. It may be slow and not the greatest against bosses or mini bosses alone, but that's not the point. The point here is to activate Headstone as many times as we can so we can keep our abilities afloat and also have something that's great at picking targets off at long distances. Alternatively, the Syncopation 53 Pulse is another weapon I recommend you have, as you can use it as an anti-unstoppable weapon, get a headstone as a ball on it, but also the ability to craft your own version with better stats to pick and choose from. For our secondary, I'm using the Pointer Stag Bow for the anti barrier capabilities it offers. Still a really great bow to use against anything arc shielded or against mini bosses, the following bow is definitely worth using for its simplicity and function. It comes along with some great perks such as Vorpal, and this in hand can put out some serious DPS against whoever it is against. If you're going to play a long distance role with the following build, then you'll definitely want to keep this on you at all times, 
or alternatively the Insidious Raid Pulse Rifle is a great weapon to use instead if you manage to grab one with great perks. For Heavy we have the Palomara B Rocket Launcher with Ambitious Assassin and Explosive Light, a very powerful Heavy that can do some great damage once you get your Explosive Light stacks at max, and as the build will use Stasis Weapons as a way to build up Orbs of Light, this makes it one of the best Heavy to use and pair with the following setup. Of course, you are free to choose and pick what you like. Within your stats, you want to focus as much support towards your discipline so you can have a high uptime with freezing combatants. As mentioned in the last video, Osteomancy will be providing you a chunk of energy back the moment it hits a target, so all you need to do is make sure that this is further backed up with mods and such so that you can get back a full grenade in one throw. As the subclass aspect of fragments will play a big part in keeping this afloat, you want to make sure you have the firepower mod times 2 available as this will give you back half the grenade energy used upon it. When playing with the build the first time, I was able to get grenades back relatively fast, but not fast enough to cover all areas in time. Now using the firepower mod, taking charge mod and the harmonic siphon mod together allows us to always be able to throw another grenade back to back without fail. In this instance, I can throw a standard snap grenade for a bit of energy first and then chuck my turret straight after, and if done correctly, I should have a full grenade back and available still to use. So technically, we have 3 or even 4 grenades available to start with. We can also add in the grenade kickstart mod if there is space, but this is also down to you. We do also have strength at 50 which will play a big part in stopping rampaging combatants from closing the gap and recovery at 70 for that quick health recovery. Generally, the rest of the stats left will just need to focus on proving survival one way or another. Left over wise, we have Cyanic Forging 2, which will increase the duration of Hacky Breach Armor's origin trait, Rocket Scavenger for increased rockets, Absolution for reduced ability cooldown, Distribution for further reduced ability cooldown, and Bomber for reduced grenade cooldown via class ability. Now, as we have covered mods, weapons, and perks we are using, here's everything compiled into one. For Head, we have Recovery. Cyanic Forging 2, Harmonic Siphon and Element of Armors mod, Arm we have Discipline on Fault of Might mod, Chest we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, Concussive Dampener and Fire Power mod, Leg we have Discipline, Absolution, Rocket Scavenger and Taking Charge mod, Bond we have Bomber, Distribution and Fire Power mod. Now I don't tend to say this a lot with builds that I do, but this is one of the best Stasis Warlock builds that I can see becoming quite common come Grandmaster or Master Raids or any tough content in game. It shares the same usage and cover as if you had the Eye of another World Exotic with Dustfield setup, to which you can cover ground and your allies easily and with no delay. It's simply throwing a snap grenade will lead to more combatants being frozen one after another, to which you can then wipe out with a single rocket or death for your primary and secondary. And this effect will have a long lasting effect on anyone else caught within this field of shattering damage as we can use those left over to create more glaciers via headstone and proc this for more ability energy back. Very simple setup that doesn't require a lot of thinking, but it's great because it allows the following grenades to be useful for once. When Beyond Light was first released, the snap grenades were lethal in PvP but okay in PvE. With the effects practically nerfed in PvP, the usage in PvE didn't increase until the following exotic came into existence and now are practically useful in multiple ways. People will still use dust fields as they have a faster cooldown in general, but snaps also have a ton of viability because of the quick chain ability and how you can get energy back by simply using them. Combining the strength of the grenade and the exotic with two firepower mods allows users to have a constant row of frozen statues waiting for their end, which is pretty cool and powerful in endgame content. I tried to build out in Legend Psyops, Legend Story Mission, The Raid, Higher Tier Wellspring, etc, and it has been useful in all scenarios and honestly, a lifesaver for the amount of times a high level combatant would chase us down or an unstoppable going on a rampage. One core issue to build though is a lack of personal defense which many of you here probably have noticed. With the nerf to protective light, there isn't much options left to protect you in terms of one shot combatants. In my case here, I can add in the protective light mod and then add in the relevant elemental defense chest piece to negate certain damage and then perhaps add on the Whispers of Change fragments so that every time we freeze a combatant, this will reduce the incoming damage we take. That's one way of helping reduce damage, but this will affect our mods and fragments used, so this will be down to personal choice and experimentation to see what works most. Still, the build does what it needs to do, and the downside of the build is easily fixable. So if you have the new exotic gloves, and you're ready for Grandmaster, 
then do me a favor and use this build and see how it fares. I would love to get some feedback in terms of improving it if need be and generally your thoughts as well. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and turn on your notifications so you never miss out on future content. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny news and content. Once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.